Hi, my name's Mark Robinson. I'm with Revival Gardening. Um, we're here in Orlando, Florida. Um, we do worm castings. That's how we started. Premium worm castings. And then we've uh, migrated into the vermicompost and the um, we make soil amendments, organic soil amendments, but everything we do is uh, about building a healthy living soil. That's what we do. So we're soil guys. How did you get into this and what's your personal why? Well, we got into this. <laughs> I was doing research for a company called Treviva that grows the Pongamia tree here in Florida, also known as a Karanja. And we were doing testing with the Karanja meal. That's what's left over after they crush the seed. Uh, with worms and worm feeds and we had great success while I was working with them I met a guy <laughs> and he was their soil scientist and uh, basically he said I will teach you everything I know but you have to go and share all this information out there so I said yeah and um, I, I really got into this <clears throat> I was always a, a you know a gardener and wanted to grow organic I didn't try to get the poisons out of my body be healthier live longer and not have to pay for health insurance <laughs> Okay, and so that's kind of what led me there. And the gentleman that I met, uh, Jim Bennett, uh, who's a soil, an organic soil guy, um, that's what he's all about. And uh, it changed everything. I mean, it turned out to be working for someone doing an experiment to a business, and uh, one that we're, we're glad we're into. So, okay, well, tell us a little bit about your products. All right, well, we'll start with the castings. <clears throat> we make what we call a premium worm casting. So. This is what are, what they look like, okay? It smells mm -hmm. like the earth, right? Gorgeous, so soft. And you can tell a good casting because you can go like that and then it just breaks apart. Okay, so castings, you know, they'll help retain moisture. They'll, uh, uh, you know, benefits against insects and diseases. Um, but we decided to, our whole thing was if we're gonna make a casting, let's make the absolute best casting we can. And so I'll give you an analogy. If I'm doing, <clears throat> worm castings i'm making castings and i feed that worm lettuce i get whatever nutrition's in that lettuce through the worm made into a casting so how do you get a more powerful casting well it's what you feed them so we start with corn and alfalfa like a traditional uh operations that makes that just grows worms okay to that we add north atlantic sea kelp we add granite dust malted barley grains and um, Karanja meal. And that's what our, ca our castings get a higher NPK than anything else out there. But in really in worm castings, that doesn't mean anything. It's all the other nutrients, the calcium carbonates, what's the, the good biology and the good fungi that's in the castings, okay? Because when you get that into your soil, you need that life in the soil <clears throat> to get things broken down and make it bioavailable to a plant. So it's, it's not just castings, it's alive. <clears throat> so we started with the worm castings, okay? That's the feed, the bedding for the worm castings is we take uh, horse manures from the Olympic stables, and we know they get fed pretty well. Uh, and so that becoming a, a waste stream, okay? We take that, it's composted, it's aged for three years. We bring that in, we grind that. Then we take Florida peat, and we grind that, and they get double ground together. And that's the bedding for the worms. And then you add the feed, and then they go through the bedding and the feed, and over time, they create the castings. We run them through trommels. We separate the castings from the eggs, from the worms, and it's just a cycle like that. And so we're just constantly producing worm castings. We sell them in 15 pound bags, 30, quarter ton, ton, whatever people need. But um, it's one of the best natural soil amendments you could you know, put in your plants and we've done side by sides where we've taken you know your cheapest organic compost at the big box store and bought two snapdragons and two uh, collard greens and then one we just put castings on the other one we didn't and you know five or six inches of growth difference in 10 days it's amazing what it does but while we were working with these we started really learning about the other ingredients and how they're used in soil mixes and so we brought some here today if you wanted to see kind of what we do. These are the things that go into castings, they go into soil, they go into uh, IPM, integrated pest management teas, that you can, uh, which means you start before the bugs show up, okay? 
Um, and what you're doing is you're feeding the plants and you're doing it either by pouring it right on the ground around the plants or full, you're spraying the leaves. And it's feeding the plants and it's giving them the things they need uh, so they can basically fight off pests and diseases all by themselves. So first, show you kelp meal. You want to take a look at that. And go ahead and smell that. Mm, it smells kind of nice, like uh, seaweed. It's exactly what it is. It's North Atlantic kelp. <clears throat> this kelp is actually food grade. So what they do to get this kelp is they basically harvest it from the sea. They're 30 foot long. They sun dry it and they chop it in different sizes. And the ones they feed to the horse is one price. The dogs get another price. The humans get another price. This stuff, we actually eat ourselves every day in a shake. But it's, it's a plant feeding plants. And it's just over 60 elements, vitamins, minerals, gilberylic acid. There's wonderful things for plants already in plant form, already balanced out. So just what we're trying to do is mimic nature. Plants feeding plants okay so that's that this is karanja meal when it's all ground up like that when we get it from the plant this is grown and processed here in florida it's a it's a cake so again it's like a, a neem and they press the the seed the oil comes out and that's the cake left over. There's still a little bit of trace oil in there, karanjin, mm -hmm. which has got a lot of pesticidal properties. But this is a natural fertilizer. And what does that smell like to you? <laughs> it smells kind of like brownie mix or something like, like, like that. Like a cereal. Yeah. Right, so in a lot of parts of the world, they just take this and they just throw it out on the ground. Mm -hmm. If you go to, Indian, to an Indian um, grocery store and you go into the section where they sell the cosmetics, you'll see a lot of neem cake and karanja cake in the products, mm -hmm. okay? This is used, they take the oil for uh, like a biofuel, a lamp oil, uh, skin diseases. There's a whole thing on, on these, what this is actually used for in the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. It's finally grown here and processed here now. So we can get it fresh. Okay. I think I've seen it in shampoo. Yeah, you'll see it in shampoo. This is neem meal. So everyone knows what neem oil, or most people know what neem oil is. Um, smell that and tell me what you think it is. Mm, that smells like taco seasoning. <laughs> or, or a coffee, Yeah. maybe. It's very nice. It's very smell pleasant very smell. Edible. Tastes like hell. <laughs> yeah, okay. But they put it in toothpaste, they put it in soaps, they use it for skin treatments. Same thing, it's just used, it's a, it's a sacred plant in India, mm -hmm. but it's, it's just, it works wonders. And so we put this, we don't give this to the worms, we'll give the karanja, they love it. But we do this in our soils and we do this with our teas. This stuff is, is crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, something else that most people don't know, it's gonna sound a little strange, mm -hmm. malted grains. Mm -hmm. So we get this from beer supply and this has been run through the, mm -hmm. the mill. And if you oh, yeah, pick it up, see- like a brewery. Right, so you got the hulls and then you got the grain. Okay, so we use malted barley because it's the cheapest, but any malted grain will do. Mm -hmm. Full of enzymes. Okay, most people think that you talk about the grain and say, oh, after they've made the beer. No, before you make the beer. This stuff is amazing what it will do in your soil. Okay. Some of the other things you can do is using a, a humic acid. If you don't have a lot of humates, you get a, a full power like this. Um, 20 milliliters to a gallon stuff goes forever. This we mix with some of our teas. It's got a lot of uh, great properties. Um, we use this product, Protec, and this is uh, silicon dioxide, especially in the summertime. So we use this, it helps um, with pests. It helps with strengthening the plants. And there's, you know, there's a lot to all of this. There's a lot of biology and chemistry to all this. We actually have all the papers on it. And when we have customers that want to know about it, we just send it so they can read. Because we could be here all night just talking about a product, but just basically some of the stuff that we do. Mm -hmm. um, alfalfa. People don't know this was a poor man's fertilizer at one time. Mm -hmm. Now they make it in pellets that they feed to horses, and we just run it through the mill machines. Oh, I see. 
and it's a natural fertilizer. And if you were to go look up what is in alfalfa, you'll see all the benefits of it. And you'll see that people actually use large quantities in crops. Mm -hmm. But it's an inexpensive way. You know, it's, it's a poor man's sea kelp is mm -hmm. what it is. So we use this. You take this with karanja and you put it in your roses and watch what happens. It's amazing. There's, there's formulas for different plants. There's all, you know, depending on what the plant needs, right? Mm -hmm. Because if everything that a plant needs, it's in the soil, the plant and everything else will take care of itself, okay? Mm -hmm. The plants will have the ability to make their own terpenes to fight off bugs, kind of like herbs do, right? Some of the other things, we're big on granite dust or basalt, remineralizing, and that's just rock dust. And this is one of those things you put down once, you don't need to put it again for five or 10 years, depending on how much you put down. We recommend don't use the full amount here in Florida at first because it'll just go through the sand until you build up the organic matter. Mm -hmm. So just put down enough for the season. And then by season three, you're probably good for 10 years. Um, aloe vera. So everybody knows that aloe vera has got all these health benefits. It's magic for plants. Mm -hmm. Not know that. You can grow your own aloe vera and it grows in our sandy soil without any inputs. Mm -hmm. You can fillet it, dip it in water, get the tannins off, and then just mm -hmm. run it through a blender with water and pour it around your plants. When we do teas, we actually put it in the tea bags, and I'll show what one looks like in a minute. It kicks in the SAR of a plant, its own resistance, systemic acquired resistance uh, mechanism, so it fights off things itself. It kicks that into gear. When you add them all up, you just you look at it and just go, wow, look at all the vitamins, minerals, properties, just you know, uh, growth hormones, all kinds of crazy stuff. It all adds up. Plants will pull what they need depending on what kind of plant it is. This is a aretha nut or a soap nut. There's a couple of trees that they call soap nuts. They have some that grow here in Florida. And just look at the thickness of the shell. Mm -hmm. okay. It smells very sweet. Right. So what you do, you put about that much in a 16 ounce bottle of water and you let it sit overnight. Don't ever bubble this. It'll make soap suds. You don't have to crush it. You just sit no. it in water. You can buy the powder if you want to do it real quick and just mix the powder. They make the powder. We're old school, so we do it this way. Um, are they reusable or once you use it in the water? They're reusable. You can probably get three uses out of it. We go two and then the third use goes in the washing machine. This is how they used to make suds for soap years and years ago. Soap nut, that's why they call it soap nut powder. But this has saffinins in it. You use this in a regiment uh, when you're fighting bugs. This does wonderful things for combating pests and diseases. So again, we're, all of this stuff is just plants feeding plants. The humic acids derived from stuff that's you know deep in the, deep in the earth and been sitting there for a while. Mm -hmm. um, so, so this takes away the spraying culture of trying to combat pests and mold. And now you're just instead giving health shots to your plants so they can do their own work. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's exactly it. So when we say IPM, integrated pest management, meaning we integrate this in and that's what manages the pest for us. Mm -hmm. The less you spray, the less you have to when it comes to any kind of chemical. But chemical kills the biology. And, and what people don't understand, you know, you see a green leaf and that's chlorophyll, that makes sugar. So the plant's got making sugar and the biology in the ground wants the sugar and the plant needs nutrients and they talk to each other. I'm gonna send you sugar, send me the calcium, magnesium or whatever it is I need. And that's how it's, a plant is that simple. Just like in a forest, the leaves fall, decay, break down, and you have enough diversity of plants because some plants can pull nitrogen from the air. Some can pull silicon out. Every, everything does a little bit different thing. Just like you can grow natural fertilizers and chop and drop. Yeah. So what we try to show people is build your living soil. And yeah, when we're in sand, sometimes it costs a little more to get started if you want it like right away. But then your next growing season, all of a sudden your cost just drops almost to nothing. You do a raised bed garden with these items and uh, after your three months and you're gonna go to your next growing cycle, you add some malted barley grains, a little kelp and a skin of castings and it's back up and running and it'll be healthier and have more um, of the MPK, the vitamins and minerals, those things in it than it did when it started. So you just keep getting it better and better and better. Mm -hmm. You want to get if you have the room you can get the, the 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 stinging nettle the mexican sunflowers the comfrey those kind of things that grow in this soil without any cost 
and you literally chop them and drop them right on top of your plants and you're just putting nutrients back in. Mm -hmm. I was excited to see this biochar because I'm thinking, oh, wow, what if we take that tea and get it into that biochar because that'll say, stay suspended and it'll hold it longer. Mm -hmm. But yeah, this will get you away from using chemicals. This is all natural. Mm -hmm. um, and what's the frequency like? So like, is this a once a week or once every three months? Like what's the consistency of each of these in terms of how you utilize them? Well, we usually mix castings with the soil mixes when we first started. Okay, and you can always top dress periodically down the line when you're growing a new plant or, you know, this will get the biology kicked into gear into the soil. Mm -hmm. The nutrients, if we're making our soil mix, um, we have a formula and we just add it per cubic foot. We add that amount and then it just kind of takes care of itself. And then it's just a matter of we have a base tea that we call the feeder tea and it's karanja, neem, kelp and the malted barley grains. And so a lot of people, when they have a bug problem, right, they, they go, I'm going to get some neem oil and they'll spray it. And they spray it and then they go, I didn't go away. Mm -hmm. Well, they think it's a side. They think it's a pesticide. Sides kill. It's not. Neem only interrupts the breeding and feeding cycles of insects. There's four cycles, which means you would have to do that spray every 72 hours four times. Well, by putting it in the soil and making the teas with it and putting it into the soil, it's now become systemic in the plants, okay? And it's not just the, the azadiractin from neem or the uh, pongamian from the karanja or the karanjans. Mm -hmm. It's the other 200 constituents and 100 constituents that, mm -hmm. that make up that really creates things along with everything else. Mm -hmm. So that's our base feeder tea. Now, depending on if I got lazy and I skipped it for a couple of weeks or whatever, I might do a, a these are all tools in the toolbox. Mm -hmm. I might add more tools. I might do a super tea. I want wreatha nut, powder. I want to use uh, aloe vera. I'm going to use Axil, and I'm going to use humic acid with that because I just forgot I was so darn busy and I just gave it everything at one shot. But we found our best results was uh, once a week, we make a tea and we just do a soil drench, basically pour in the soil. And what we do is we get one of these bags. You can use a stocking, you can use a cheesecloth. This is actually a paint strainer bag from Home Depot. This is two years old, so you can see it gets quite a bit of use. And we just put our ingredients in there, tie it off. We take a five gallon Home Depot bucket. Uh, we let it sit in the sun so the chlorine comes out, or if you have a bubbler, throw it in there for two hours, it'll get the chlorine out. We put the ingredients in here and we soak it and we bubble it overnight, eight hours. If you don't have a bubbler, soak it for 24. And switch it just like a tea bag. When you pull this out and you strain all the juice out and you have this muck, you do not throw that away. That's goodies. You put that around your best plants, okay? Then we take the tea and we just strain it out and we just spray it on the soil or we spray it under the leaves and on top of the leaves, a drench. It's just, it's that simple. Mm -hmm. And we like to do a soil drench one day of the week, say a Wednesday, and then on Sunday we'll do a foliar drench. If we do it religiously, the place looks like Jurassic Park. It's out of control. So, and we don't have the bug problems in the past, you know, the diseases, we just don't, don't have it because if you stay on it like religiously, mm -hmm. if you miss it for a couple of weeks, we just ramp up all the stuff together, give it a spray and everything's just running along fine and growing and producing and mm -hmm. um, don't seem to have the problems either. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's up to the individual. Some people are, you know, want to be at it twice a week. But if you if you do it religiously, then you're you need another hobby because that's all the gardening you're going to have to do mm -hmm. besides picking. Mm -hmm. it, it really simplifies everything and stress factors. Mm -hmm. So one of the biggest things you can do is keep your moisture consistent. Mm -hmm. OK, is try that uh, when you get a plot going next time. And let's say you're doing collard greens. OK, mm -hmm. so you have a row of collard greens. Go, OK, this part of the row, we're going to do biochar charged. And then go to the other end and go, you know, maybe we're just going to do the, you know, put it, incorporate in the soil and somewhere else do a mix mm -hmm. and just see what the results are. Yeah. Okay. Because you want to get that sweet spot with your input costs. Yep. All right. I got a funny feeling if you charge that with the tea, because the tea is the most cost effective way. Mm -hmm. Charge that with the tea, put some in your soil and then do the regular tea regimen. Mm -hmm. 
I think you're going to have one a whole lot less problems mm -hmm. and a whole lot more abundance. So if you want to put this stuff out to market and by doing this with these ingredients, you're going to get better flavors too. Mm -hmm. I was out yesterday and this guy had a farm, but it, he wasn't a farmer. It was just him for his family and friends. Mm -hmm. But he had, I don't know, 4,000 square feet of rows. He had, he had three acres of fruit trees. He was just going for it. And he was he was from Indonesia somewhere, so he had a lot of rare fruit trees and stuff. He got a different prescription, okay? And so what I would do is, <clears throat> we have a whole series of formulas, okay? And what we tell people, like, do you guys grow herbs? Do we? Yeah, we grow. Okay. We multitude. So you know how herbs usually don't have a pest problem? Because of the smell, the terpenes. Plants have the ability to do that, too, if they're got everything going on in the soil. But you could take some of those herbs and grind them up and put them in the teas. Mm. They have insecticidal properties. They're uh, or, uh, oregano oil, thyme oil, rosemary, oil, any of the mint families, they actually use those in organic insecticides. Mm -hmm. I just thought of that the other day because I'm, I was <clears> looking <throat> through all these different companion planting um, abilities and I saw mint and basil on so many things and I thought well why don't I just throw this in my compost tea you know so it sounds like there's even more I don't know why that's never occurred to me just like the forest if I tell people look, what do you see oh I see an oak tree some pine trees and a cypress and I take them out and I go oh, there's another 200 different plants you didn't see because you were just looking at the forest not the plants within the yeah. forest yeah. so they have this diversity all that's going back into the ground so the same thing you take all these herbs that have all these properties and you put that into your compost, you put it into your teas for treatment, and all that's going right back into the plants. It's we're just mimicking nature. That's all we're doing. Okay, with diversity. And we're trying to do it as inexpensively as possible. This should not be a two hundred dollar tomato. Then that's what happens with a lot of people. Then they get the bugs and they give up, you know. If they knew how easy this was to grow by doing these things, most of the people don't want to mix the teas. So we're actually making a, a one gallon tea bag. Even with, we've got a lot of this we get in powder form and we're formulating, we're testing it with a lady who does plumerias. It's changed her life, her, her growth factors. But you'd be able to take the bag and just stick it in a thing of water and let it sit for 24 hours, swish it around, break it open and pour the tea out and have the same thing happening. Mm -hmm. And no must, no fuss. You got to make it simple for the majority of the people. Mm -hmm. They just, they either don't understand it, don't have the time to understand it. I think mostly they had not had success with it, so they fear it. Mm -hmm. But once you give them their first success, yeah. then they go crazy with it, mm -hmm. which is what we want. Exactly. Right? Now, let me ask you this. Why is this method not used on a commercial monoculture level? On a commercial monoculture? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> you want to talk about a specific industry like citrus? Citrus or corn or, you know. So the citrus guys doing it the way their daddy did it. Because I worked with the citrus guys for a long time. We had a solar power plant we put in. We had to manage citrus along our power plant. And um, it was a cheap way. They had their way of doing it. It was like bring these chemicals out, drop it in, spray this much water on it. We got oranges, we got the high bricks level, the sugar level, that's what they get paid on, right? And it was an industry that had a floor and a ceiling. You went to Sunkist or, or Florida Natural and they said, uh, I'm gonna give you my crop for three years, I will pay you nothing less than this price, mm -hmm. which they knew they could make money, so if there was a hurricane or whatever, and depending on their bricks or sugar level, this price. Well, they already had a formula for the chemicals. So they just did their chemical thing. Until they found out that the monoculture and because those chemicals did not give biology and life to the soil, they got hit with the psyllid and destroyed the industry. Mm -hmm. They are now going back to nature, okay? And people have gotten away from that. It was after World War II that the chemical, the guys that made chemical warfare had to do something, so they made fertilizers, mm -hmm. okay? And it got to be big. But they're actually finding uh, the people that do true regenerative farming rotate their crops, rotate their crops with animals that when there's droughts, the next door neighbor literally on the other side of the fence is having a drought and they are not. Mm 
-hmm. They're building tilth in the soil. They're put. They're building the skin of the earth back. Okay, um, it's cheaper for them. They're actually making profit, and it's all healthy and natural. And they're sequestering carbon. So everybody wants the carbon thing. You want to solve the problem, build the soils back up. That's where the carbon came out of. We didn't add carbon to the planet. Mm -hmm. Okay, but just by using, bi in fact, biochar, these kind of things, that puts carbon back into the soil. Okay, mm -hmm. using humates helps bring that carbon back into the soil. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, I guess lastly, just talk a little bit about if the average consumer wanted to go through you, like plug yourself. Plug myself. Okay, so we have the website revivalgardening.com and you can go on there. We initially built it for um, just the casting so you can read all about it. There's actually a new calculator, so if you don't know how much to use, you can type in four by eight by six inches, whatever it'll tell you. Um, end of this week, we're going to have the, uh, the other products on there. They're being put on there now by our web guy. And so we do not ship right now. We deliver locally for free. It's part of our service. So when you order product from us, you can type in your zip code. I get an email real quick and it says, how do you want me to contact you? Email, phone. And we get you on a delivery schedule and we just pull up and do the transaction. But it's all done in person. And while we're there, we offer free consultations for our clients. So they've all got questions mm -hmm. and we know, so we might as well answer them. Mm -hmm. So anytime then they can call us afterwards or email us with any of their questions and we kind of help them out and help them get started growing and show them how to start with this and then how to get into, you know, composting and, 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 uh, and getting away from buying everything. Mm -hmm. it, we all, there's two ways to garden here. You can take years and build your soil or you can jumpstart it and then from there get into where you're, 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 um, you're regenerating your compost, you're re regenerating your waste stream. It's all going back into things and then you're getting more and more self-sufficient mm -hmm. and you're growing great stuff. If you're, if you're growing organically with, and, and you have nutritionally dense foods, okay, first of all, you're saving money. Have you seen the prices in the grocery store? I, I, I don't do the grocery shopping. I did last week and I almost died. I couldn't believe it. Okay, so nutritionally dense foods without the chemicals, it's the chemicals that are making us sick, which means later on, you're not paying for the medical expenses of being sick and being sick, right? In our house, when anybody brings anything in from outside, nobody says anything, but there's just a smile start popping. There's just something about we grew this, right? Going out after work, what a way to just relax. I take a cocktail and walk around and just look at all the plants and you just stress free yourself, okay? They've got studies proving that when you put your hands in the soil, that biology does something for your immune system. It's just, we, it's just part of life. It's part of what we're doing on the planet. We're part of the system, okay? We've been part of the problem, but if we stop poisoning ourselves, if we start with our yard, you, you watch people who... From when they're beginning, they got an oak tree and sand, and then you see the neighbor who's got a full-on food forest, and you watch the transition when they start. Their attitude changes, they their skin. I mean, just it's just healthier living, and it's cheaper. If you know, for an old guy like me, I'm saving money, right? Why wouldn't I do it? You know, I, I can I can take simple dishes just by the herbs, and the herbs are the easiest thing to grow here. Start if you're if you're nervous about growing. Start with herbs, you cannot screw up, okay? And it's funny here because a lot of people come from up north. This is the problem that I see. And they go, I'm trying to grow a tomato in the middle of the summer. Well, you can't grow big beefsteak tomatoes in summer here. We're the opposite of what's up north. But we have four growing seasons. Now, a lot of people tell you in the summer you can't grow much here. Not so. Of the traditional northern vegetables, maybe, I can get four or five. But if I do what I call the Caribbean Basin, Central South America, India, those hundreds of vegetables and fruits grow here in the summertime in abundance. And I've got a lot of clients from all over the world and I just, they want to show me their backyards and I go look and I see amazing stuff growing here in the middle of summer. It's easy to grow. If a lot of clients just don't know how, we say, let's start with your soil and get, if you're going to be a raised bed, let's get it proper pot let's get it proper it's going to be in the ground let's just get it set up right and after that just water it you know kind of take best fertilizer for your garden your footprint walk through it and take a look but 
just the, the there's, there's just so many aspects of gardening from saving money, from health, from attitude to relaxation, exercise. I, I could go on all day about why people should garden.